Whoa, what the hell? Your Honor, I put it to you that this man is in his 50s and is trying something new. Therefore, I conclude he is having a midlife crisis. Come on, Higgins. Somebody's been living here. Wow. Mm. Okay. Let's not hang around. Not what I was expecting to find in the middle of the bushes here right now, but we'll work with it, we'll work with it. Just because somebody in their 40s or 50s tries out something new maybe, people sort of automatically come to the conclusion that they must be having a bit of a midlife crisis. I'm here to tell you, I don't believe in that. What are you, oh, hello, hello there my friend. You're a happy boy. Oh, you're the happiest little boy, huh? Oh, <laughs> well, that was a nice little interlude. Maybe that's what they were shouting at. A crazy dog. Is he coming back? Yeah, it might look like that on the surface of it, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's not always the case, is it? Maybe it is in some cases. Perhaps some people are having a midlife crisis, and I'll sort of give my views on that in a bit. But, first of all, I want to tell you about my point of view and why I want to dispel the myth that people have midlife crisis or at least why I'm not having a midlife crisis. Yeah, I've started a YouTube channel. That's right. Well, actually, I started one about 17 years ago. I was one of the first, one of the pioneers. And um, I used to put up all sorts of rubbish. But I kind of left it dormant. I left it sitting there. Big mistake. I should have kept on it, but never mind. You look back in hindsight, it's always the case, isn't it? So much easier in hindsight. So the point is, I had a YouTube channel way back then, so although I'm starting a YouTube channel now, I'm restarting one, I had one from the beginning. Oh yeah, 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 I've been there, I've done that. That's right. That's one reason why this is not a midlife crisis. I've done it before. <sighs> I am pretty sure I've got some form of ADHD, I would think. I'm probably, probably dyslexia as well, stuff like that, but you know, that's all right. Still got to get on with things. The reason I say that is because I'm trying to organize my thoughts in my head, just get them all sort of in a line. That's the tricky bit. It's quite challenging. You know, they're all bouncing around all over the place and you know, I keep trying to reorder things and put them like that. And it's like, well, no, that doesn't work. So I'll just get them out there one at a time and hopefully they'll fall into some sort of order. The reason I'm saying that I'm going to give you some sort of logic, if I can, as to my reasoning behind why I think I'm not having a midlife crisis. And the only reason I bring this up in the first place, the whole midlife crisis lark is, I saw some YouTube video the other day and some woman called it that on, a, on a, her channel. And I thought, that's interesting. That's kind of what I'm doing at this time is starting a YouTube channel. And I thought, am I having a midlife crisis? And then I remembered, Oh no, that's right, I'm not, because I never have. What a day to be out here in a park, walking by a spooky old dead tree. That is cool. Let's see if we can get a groovy angle on it. How does this look? It's very hard to tell from down here, but is that really cool or what? I don't know, you let me know. That's quite funny. There's a concerned dog back there looking at me like, what's he doing, weirdo? It used to be just the humans doing that. Now it's dogs as well. Ooh, through the dappled light. I like this. Right, what was this ramble about? Why this is not a midlife crisis. My point of view, it goes something like this. First of all, I haven't got kids, so it can't be. It's impossible. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> well, not quite, but not far off. So my theory goes a bit like this. How can you have a midlife crisis if you've never had kids? Think about it. If you become a dad in your 20s or maybe early 30s or something, chances are you're going to give up the next 18 years or so of your life, maybe a bit longer these days, to bringing up your kid, you know, and making sure he gets a good start in life. Goes to school, goes to football, does all the hobbies, all the stuff. You set them on the path to maybe university or maybe they get a job or whatever it is. But 
you know, if you're a good dad, and most of you are, and should be, you know, you want to spend that time and, and basically they need a bit of guidance and you need to be there for it. So credit to you for doing that and you should. But then one day later on, you probably wake up, turn around and go, hang on a minute. I never bought that motorbike or that Porsche I wanted when I was a kid, when I had all these plans, you know? And uh, at that point, you get, maybe your kids are grown up and they start flying the nest and doing their own thing and you get that opportunity. Classic midlife crisis, fair play. You know, you've gotten through the hard part of life and you've, you've done your work, you've, you've had a job, maybe you've earned some money and you know, you've got a bit of money to spare, suddenly the kids are gone and you can get out there and get all the toys you always wanted. You can take up mountain biking. You can buy that motorbike, get the sports car with a soft top that you never had when you were younger, you know? Do all that stuff, whatever, you name it, it's a long list of stuff, isn't it? So that to me is the classic midlife crisis. And that's fine, I've got no problem with that because I understand it. It makes a lot of sense. If you've got any amount of drive or you want to do things in life, that's the one chance you've got really. You come out of it at 40 something, let's say, I don't know, mid forties or whatever. You suddenly wake up and realize, shit, I haven't got long left of fitness and health to do all this stuff. <laughs> let's get cracking and go mountain biking with some other old dads and put like her on and what have you. Yeah, cleaned the car earlier. Not something I do on a regular basis, to be honest. I'm very, very dirty, <laughs> which I rather like, but I'm looking forward to getting clean later. That'll be nice. So obviously the question is, why is my case any different? And the obvious answer is I never had kids. Let's delve into that a little bit. Why does a man in his fifties not have kids? I can give you a real life example. Quite simply, kids was never part of the plan. I've never had much of a plan in life in general. It's always been a bit winging it. I quite like the whole winging it thing. I like the, the element of the unknown. I like the surprise. <sighs> That's weird, isn't it? Why is that? It's always been there. It's like, um, it's been like a staple thing for me. That's one thing that's always been the case. I like a bit of the element of surprise, not in, you know, not in every sense, obviously, but if I think about it, that's a kind of a theme. How do I explain it? I don't know. The rides we do, the rides I go out on, um, they're semi-planned, but on the whole, there's exploration. There's like, what's around the next corner and what's the next thing? Little bit of the unknown there. There's the not planning your life out too much. You know, these people who, kids who are growing up knowing they wanted to be teachers and doctors and stuff like that, I'm like, well, that's it. Your life's all mapped out, planned out. You know it. No, thank you. It's not for me. I like a little bit of surprise in mine. I don't want to know what every move is of my life. I want it to be a bit more exciting than that. So yeah, it's that sort of thing. Done a lot of traveling. I like to go to countries. I like to go to unusual countries, places I don't know too much, don't know much about, and go off the beaten track a little bit where possible. Doesn't that make life more interesting? It does for me. So thinking about that, if I had gone the conventional route, like all my friends around me when I was in my early 20s and teens, and they were looking ahead and mapping life out, meet a girl, get married, settle down, have kids, get a job, stick with it, and all the rest of it, all the normal stuff, there'd be no element of surprise. There'd be nothing exciting would probably happen in life. It would just be mapped out, beginning to end, retire, I don't know, buy a camper van, drive around a bit or something go to Spain a lot, keel over, game over. I didn't want that, I need some variety in there. Somehow, I don't even know how, I spotted that at a very young age and thought, it's too normal for me. Sounds too normal, can't be having that. <laughs> I guess I figured out at quite a young age that, you know, by having kids, by the way, I don't hate kids by any means, you know, I've got nothing against them. There's no, you know, there's no big problem there with that. It's just that I realized that it probably wasn't for me. Nothing wrong with my upbringing. It was fine. It was absolutely fine. You know, it was great. But I guess another reason is that I wanted to, if I was going to have kids, I had to be 100% sure that I was going to give them the best possible life. And the way I am and the way I was, I thought, I don't know if I can guarantee that. I imagine it would be more of a struggle, you know, 
um, that kids might, they might not have all the things they wanted. They might not be able to keep up with their neighbors or their, their peers and that sort of thing. So I thought I didn't really want to put them through that, you know, to have a tough life. I wanted them to have a, like the perfect luxurious life that you dream about. And there was no way I could guarantee that with my school grades. <laughs> so I thought, nah, let's just write that one off. And that's what I did. Oh, not bad. Nice and sharp. We did this as kids quite a lot. Eat blackberries. Oh man, that's sharp. That is lovely. Oh man. Back to the real story and the real reasons for it. The main reason is that I knew that I wanted to do so much in life. There's so many things to try. There's so many things to do. There's so much excitement, you know, in this world. And yeah, I didn't have 18 to 20 years to waste, basically. Therefore, I can conclude, Your Honour, that this is not a midlife crisis because my life, unlike many other lives, has not been logarithmic, it has been linear. I like that. I do like a graph. What do I mean by that? Come on. Logarithmic is a graph that has a curve to it that goes like that. And if you imagine that part of the curve, the scooped out bit of the bend, is those 18 to 20 years I keep talking about. And then suddenly you're in the last part of the graph. And that's when your man there wakes up and goes, shit, I need to buy a 750 or a 900 <laughs> Ducati or something or other, or a sports car or get that Porsche or go skiing or whatever it is they want to do or travel. I never went to Florida, I never went to Vegas, uh, blah, blah, blah. Whereas none of those things have ever stopped since the age of 17, 18, or yeah, probably when I got my independence then, around that time when I had three jobs and I was working three jobs. I've never stopped working pretty much since then. Basically, I've continued doing things in a linear fashion. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, there's been no real pause on life to stop and do something else on the side and then pick up life again. It's carried on at that age. I got a job and during that time, in my early 20s, I was going on holidays a lot, traveling a lot. And then at one point I realized, hang on, hang on, I'm falling into the trap here. I'm going into this long-term job, not having that. Pulled the plug on it after about 10 years when I was in my late 20s and thought, no way, not having this. I'm falling into that trap of a job for life sort of thing where I wake up one day and I'm in my 50s and it's, you know, and I think, oh shit, what have I done? So I pulled the plug on that job when I was in my late 20s, packed everything in, hit the road and went traveling. That was the beginning of it. Ever since then, it's been like, well, keep going, go to London, came to London, moved around, had some great times, still going up the linear path. Always wanted to get a motorbike, never really realized that it would happen at some point. With my newfound life in London or whatever, I was able to get that motorbike and have those motorbikes for years. Was always cycling in between always traveling in between. Used to go like every single year with a mate of mine on our motorbikes into Europe. I've been everywhere in Europe. You can go on a motorbike pretty much. Um, every year it was a sort of epic two and a half thousand, two thousand mile trip. Camping, you know, France, Spain, Italy, Belgium, Luxembourg, you know, you name it, all these places. Italy, Austria, Switzerland, the Alps, Czech Republic, Germany, Holland, Netherlands. Yeah, done them all. So, you know, just keeping on doing new things and trying new things all the time because, and there's so much more to do. And the staple amongst it all has always been the travel, always traveling, always enjoying it. You know, the excitement of going to new places and discovering some new sort of country you've never been to before, hiking, trekking, canoes, oh, being on canoe trips, being on hiking trips, backpacking in the back country and strange places out in the Central Asia. <sighs> You know, it's just, life is getting best, right? And so for me, somebody might look at me and say, oh, this guy starting a YouTube channel or he's just, you know, he's getting back on a motorbike or whatever. Poor sod's obviously going through a midlife crisis. And that's why I say no. Because to me, a midlife crisis is when the scoop and you come out the other side of the scoop and you realize you haven't done this, that, and the other. But in my case, life has been linear and I've never stopped reinventing myself and keeping on doing new things. That's it. That's my explanation to it. Make of it what you will. I don't know whether I articulated that particularly well. I hope it makes some sort of sense. It sort of does in my head. And of course, I've got my head full of just 
bullet points that I stitched together. But hopefully you sort of get the idea and why I think that's the case. I don't even know why I'm saying this. I just think maybe, maybe others out there are thinking of along these lines that, you know, maybe they are having a midlife crisis or others look at them as if they are. Ah, don't worry about it, you know. It doesn't matter either way. Whatever you've done or whatever you're doing, as long as you want to keep doing things and keep, you know, trying out new things and exciting things, however you do it and achieve it, it doesn't matter. Just, just crack on and do stuff, you know. I'm convinced we get one go at this place, this old planet Earth thing right there. I'm convinced we get one go at it, so you might as well give it a damn good go. That's one thing I say about my dad when he was around, uh, I thanked him once for giving me the tools to get through life. I think he did a pretty decent job of that. Just make sure you do the same. Well, I hope that was an okay sort of ramble. I hope I haven't offended anyone. I didn't mean to. I certainly haven't done anything intentionally to offend anyone, but that's just my take on things, you know. I am a little concerned that sometimes I do have a tendency to come across a bit offensive with some people. I don't know why. I'm a bit of a straight talker. I just say what I think. And I think some people can get that mis misconstrued sometimes. If it does happen, it's genuinely accidental. I'm just giving my opinions. I just remembered one more thing. Let me just gather my thoughts. Nobody's ever really asked me this, but I guess people do wonder about this sort of thing. It's a strange sort of taboo, controversial subject in a way, the choice of kids or not. I imagine that people would look at people in my position and, you know, oh, don't you have any regrets? Don't you wish you did have kids? And do I regret it? Well, no, not really. I don't regret it because it's all part of the, you know, the grand plan, if you like, is to not have kids and keep in a good, fit, healthy state. Very important. That's crucial because if you're not in a good, fit, healthy state in some kind, how can you do half this stuff I want to do, you know? How can you go biking, hiking, canoeing, and do all that sort of stuff or whatever it is you want to do, you know? So, um, so it's all part of it. So no regrets on that side of it. It's probably helped me keep in a good state, really, in some ways. The only thing, the only thing, I suppose, that sometimes crops up, I realize, you know, as you get a bit older, you get a bit wiser. You've learned a lot of stuff through life, you know? That's just the nature of it. And I realize that probably one of the pleasures of being a parent, I would imagine, is that you get to pass a lot of that knowledge on. My dad taught me a lot about tools and I don't know how to fix cars and all sorts of stuff really. You know, whether it was intentional or not in some cases, sometimes it was just, it just sort of rubs off on you, doesn't it? But in my case, of course, I don't have that option. So I can't pass on this knowledge I've gained in life to anyone else, anyone else in my family below me or my kids, because I don't have them. But what I can do is I can pass them on to people out there who may be listening, you know, who want to know a little bit about this and that, uh, whatever, you know, I can help with. So not all is lost, let's put it that way. It would be nice to pass it on to family, but they're not there. So I'll pass it on to anybody else who wants to know about it. I'm not gonna force it on anyone. If I get an opportunity, I can talk about stuff with a certain amount of authority, which comes with its very own imposter syndrome, of course. Maybe we'll do a ask me anything one day. You can base it on what I've been into over the years. Photography, mountain biking, cycling, travel. Those are probably all the big ones. Oh, playing in a band, of course. I've been playing in rock bands for since I was 16. Uh, playing bass guitar, that is. Only four strings, only a five string rubbish. Loads of stuff. Maybe we'll do that one day. What do you think? For somebody who says he's not a very good talker, done off waffle on sometimes, but there we go. <laughs> what can you do? Do you know why? It's because I'm crap at endings. I don't know how to end these things. Well, that was really great. Thank you so much for listening. It's really good of you all. I hope you enjoy and have a wonderful day. I don't know. End. <laughs> Trouble is, I suppose, you get out a bit of a roll. The ideas start to like roll one after another. As I said before, scripting is not my thing. I just kind of freestyle it. Oh, look at that, freestyling. With that little beauty right there. Come on. There we go, that's it, ramble over, just making the most of life, wringing its neck, trying to do as much as humanly possible, and living a <laughs> live life by a linear chart in my case. Do not take a freeze frame of that. You know what, I'm really starting to like this making videos lark. It's really good. Talking to camera is like talking to people, because you are people, you are a person out there. You are watching this, and you are my people. I can't recommend it enough. If you're out there, and you've been thinking about this, starting a YouTube channel, do it.
I'll see you next time. I'm, I'm getting out of here. It's going wrong. I'm going. I'll see you on the next one somewhere.